And here we go. How do I look? Molto bene. Hello everyone, I'm Bantolo for Gallery Teachers and here we talk about TEFL, that is teaching English as a foreign language. You took your TEFL certificate, possibly with uh, Gallery Teachers, and now you are ready to start your new teaching life. Whether it's uh, abroad or in your home country, working in a school or self-employed, or working online and do a bit of both. There are a lot of beauties in this job and also a lot of uh, difficulties. Today we get some very good advice from a professional business coach that is specialized in uh, teaching. Our very special guest for today is uh, Lucy Bowling of uh, Lucy Bowling Coaching. Lucy, thank you very much for having accepted our invitation. Thank you, Bartolo. Really nice to be here. Can we say that you are a teacher or what has uh, been your path exactly? I started as a teacher 20 years ago. Um, when I graduated from high school, I went on to study uh, teaching English as a foreign language. I did it in Poland and Gdansk, to be more precise. And then I moved on to lecture at university and I worked in the corporate environment as a learning and development consultant and then as a talent manager. I would say that throughout my career, my activities have been related to teaching. I mean, coaching is not teaching, but I started as a teacher. And then when I was training people in companies, some of my hats that I was wearing was teaching them, but then training, accompanying them, coaching them. But within HR, there is a department that's called talent development management. So I worked at a company in Barcelona, a recruitment firm, Michael Page, that's also present in Poland. And I was taking care of their back office. That's IT, marketing, HR, and finance. So when people came, we wanted to map their career path with us to make sure that we know what their talent is and that what they do uh, brings value not only to the company, but to their teams and to the individuals themselves. So I would organize training coachings, different learning initiatives. So becoming a coach was... It was like a logical next step to me. Um, and I remember very well when I decided to become a coach. I was coaching, you know, in my trainings. My approach was always facilitative, meaning I would ask questions instead of standing in the middle of the room and, and telling stories of teaching. And I did a strengths finder analysis. It's an assessment where you get to know your five top talents. And mine was individualization, which means that I can see uniqueness in individuals. I can see their top talents, what they're good at, their top abilities. So it was then that I decided to do my coaching certification and I accompany people now individually in their endeavors. That's very interesting because uh, one of the questions that I'm asking myself the most is, uh, who am I? I'm a creative <laughs> yes. person and uh, I have a lot of talents, but not one. What would be your suggestion in order to understand who am I? This is a question that we, of course, often ask ourselves. We have many talents. We are people of many talents, especially when I say we, I mean expats because this is the people I work with. Uh, but there are talents or passions or abilities, qualities that you demonstrate that are the strongest and that you've practiced them for the longest in your life. If you focus on those, and I mentioned Strengths Finder, there are 34 themes in total. But if you do just the basic assessment, um, you walk away with the top five. And then you will realize because the assessment is very accurate. It gives you a description. It gives you suggestions of what to do with those uh, uh, talents so that they become strengths. Just a, a side note here, you have a talent, but if you do not maximize it, if you don't capitalize on it, if you don't use it, it will not become a strength. So if you say, I am a creative person, I'm a person of many talents, I like doing many things, you want to narrow it down to a few so that you can choose a career path where you play to your strengths. And you can help in this. This is one of the topics, areas that I discuss with each and every client of mine, because I would lie if I said that they do not ask themselves this question, who am I? What am I good at? What do I want to do in my life? And most of them are in their mid thirties, uh, between mid thirties and mid forties. So they are at that stage in their lives where they want to know how they can have meaning and purpose in what they do. So just a job is not of interest to them anymore. Usually I interview our guests 
And sometimes mm -hmm. at the end, we have some uh, questions from uh, our pro members. We have a forum. Today, I would like to do the opposite, especially because some of the questions that I selected resonate very much with uh, what you're saying. So we can start from the questions and then move Perfect. on. Perfect. Okay, so I will start with uh, the questions. These are uh, the ones that I selected. I am excited to open a new business and at the same time, I'm scared. I don't know anything about accountancy and uh, website design. Where should I start from? It is, um, I think, very common to think that to open a business, you need a lot of resources. You need to have a lot of money. You need to invest a lot. You, this person mentioned an accountant um, building the website. There is so much we can do on our own. An accountant, yes, you want to consult an accountant. Um, the fees that accountants charge, depending, of course, where you're at. I'm talking about Germany, Spain, um, and Poland are absolutely affordable. They will give you advice. They will um, help you, support you. So this part you want to outsource if, you know, accounting, numbers, bookkeeping is not your strength. For many people, it is their strength, so they can do it on their own. Building a website, it is so affordable. Also, hosting is not something that you need to invest a lot of money in. Before um, tackling all the other technical issues and formalities, they should stop and think, what service do I want to offer? Who will I offer it to? And how will this service benefit the people that I'm offering it to? What makes me different? What makes the service I'm offering different to the others? Not better or worse, but of course, different. So what's my unique selling point? I built my own website. This was my Corona uh, project. I, I had a little baby uh, to take care of, but I would wake up at six, spend three hours working on my website before he woke up. And then when he was napping, I would again take two hours. But before I set, I decided what I wanted to be on that website, who I wanted to serve, why I wanted to serve, how I wanted to use my strengths, my experience, my skills. So I remember I would do some SWOT analysis sessions with myself. I put, I, I took A3 uh, sheets of paper because I'm, I really like drawing. I'm a visionary person. So typing it will not help. And when I've done that, I was able to move on to the next stage, building my website and then thinking about the marketing, thinking about uh, social media, strategizing. There are so many resources online. So they, they, first of all, they need to have the idea. They need to be clear on why they want to teach online, how they will teach, what's special about them. So what is their methodology? What makes them special and who they want to teach? Do they want to teach kids or adolescents, professionals, elderly people, they really need to define their audience, their target audience, their niche. Before we go into other payment method and the website and the accountant, they really need to have a game plan. So what income do they want to bring? What revenues do they want to make? What do they need in order to feel, yes, to pay the bills, but to feel satisfied, to feel successful? What does success mean to them? If they know that, this is the, the step number one, what is their offering? Language um, lessons, classes, to specify it, narrow it down as much as possible. And then what is the result? Here they also talk about the methodology because if they have a USP, a unique selling point, they will be able to sell, present themselves in the right light. And only then do they need maybe one page or not even a website. They need one page what they're offering is, why they do what they do, you know, why they're passionate about teaching, maybe a little excerpt about them. As for payments, they can just set an account on Stripe. And this is when they go to the accountant. If you've never done something before, yeah, you might be overwhelmed by all the uncertainty, the questions, the doubts. Yeah, it's a very valuable advice. Sometimes I talk to people and uh, their business model is, I will teach English at any level, always. Who am I? What do I stand for? What are my values? How do I want to be perceived? In a previous interview, we talked about CV and if it's uh, still worth it, spending your CV all around, knowing that 2,000 people will do exactly the same thing with uh, more or less exactly the same CV, or maybe there are different strategies that is uh, building up a brand. Yes, a brand that you will be proud of, that will be authentic to you. Personal branding is you being yourself to the best of your ability. And I started teaching or training personal branding when I worked in Barcelona with um, IT business partners who are very skilled, very experienced people, but they weren't able to communicate their brand. So they didn't have the confidence. They didn't really know what they stood for and they weren't comfortable communicating their strengths, their, the value they were adding to the company. So this is how I developed the training. And then I would incorporate this 
into every coaching so that when we present ourselves, whether it's as an entrepreneur, as a teacher, as a coach, as a, as a business owner or employee in a company, we know exactly what we stand for. We know what we are good at, what we are passionate about, you know, the skills, the abilities that we have acquired over the years. So we create this brand and then we communicate this brand. We market it. Sometimes is a discrepancy between how people see us and how we see ourselves. We need to make sure that, you know, that they go hand in hand because we might feel overconfident or we might feel insecure. Uh, what we project to the outside world might be completely different. I had this experience myself. So when I started interviewing people, I felt like uh, George Clooney in uh, Good Night and Good Luck. <laughs> and then I watched myself <laughs> and it was completely different. <laughs> so I think it's uh, yeah. a good advice to record yourself to understand how people perceive you. And then you can adjust and uh, correct some uh, small mistakes and you can improve. I'm uh, improving. You should, see, Absolutely. you should see my first interviews. Wow. <laughs> I'm better. Hopefully. I wouldn't just send out CVs. I would first make sure that I'm proud of the CV. It is just not bullet points of what I did. Um, posh, sophisticated words that um, might be even difficult to, to understand. The CV has to be easy to follow, has to be attractive. There are many, many templates online, but again, choose a template that you like. Do some research about what kind of CVs is, is welcome in the country you're in. You know, is a picture welcome or not? Should you include all your personal details like in Germany or just name and email and phone number like in the UK? Make sure that you know the norms, the regulations the do's and don'ts. And then when writing your CV, make sure that you not only write your tasks, but you know how you contributed to the company, to the team, what your achievements, accomplishments, milestones you achieved. But instead of sending a CV, is there a better strategy? So it depends how you're looking for a job, whether you're use, using social media, whether you're using your personal network, whether you're applying directly to the company, whether you're working with a recruitment agency or with the headhunter. These are all the things to be considered. Some companies only collaborate with recruitment companies, so you cannot really directly send them a CV or apply directly on their uh, job portal. You have to go through a recruitment agency. Again, you need to have a strategy when you, when you look for a job. And if we are talking about teachers, you want to find a, a school or a platform that you want to cooperate with that shares your values, your philosophy about teaching, so that you're not just wasting your time sending out CVs. It's better, you know, I always say quality is better than quantity. So if you send CVs, you really want that job and you're not sending CVs because you're frustrated or desperate. Prepare your CV and then when you start your job search proper, make sure that there is some strategy behind it, okay? That it's not just random and today I've, I've sent 30 CVs. What does that mean? How many of those 30 jobs would you really like to get? And also some companies, you, you want to visit their website and see what is their brand, what do they value so that you can adjust your CV to match their values. Some applications still require a cover letter. So a cover letter is not a copy of your CV, a cover letter should be short and sweet, to the point. And again, it has to sell your brand. You have to sell yourself. People say that networking is the most important thing. Who you know is more important than what you know. But what if uh, I'm not sociable? This is mm -hmm. something that I can relate to because I don't like parties. And uh, I know that a lot of business is done at bars, at pubs, but this is not for me. Mm -hmm. So networking is a very general term. You can network in so many different ways. And what I can say is choose the ways in which you really like networking. It's, this, it's the same with socializing. So even if you're not sociable, find what you do like. So can you socialize through writing? You can socialize with people listening to their podcast and, and writing comments. You can network finding the ways you know you can play to your strengths. So it doesn't have to be a disco. It doesn't have to be a pub. It can be a webinar. It can be a masterclass where you can even turn off your camera if you don't want to. And if you say, I'm not sociable, I'm not sociable, the venue of your socializing, if you like, has to be well chosen. So you don't go into a random event, you know, at the harbor where people just won't have, I don't know, a chit chat, a superficial conversation. So you go to a place where, you know, people are like-minded. Like with anything else, you need to have a strategy, right? So you ask me about the CVs. How will you approach your job search? Networking. How will you approach your networking activities? You always have to go back to yourself. What do I like? What am I good at? What do I enjoy? And then you choose your alternatives, not just randomly or following the crowd or doing what's trendy. Um, if what's trendy 
appeals to you, go and do it. Uh, not the other way around. Passion versus money. As teachers, we are very passionate people. I think it's uh, rare to find someone that teaches just for the money. Many of our members are motivated by our passion. And that means that sometimes uh, money is not good because they are available to do whatever possible in order to nail the job because they want to start and they don't really think about the money. But money is something very important. So should we work for free? How do we establish our pay mm-hmm. rates? Give us some mm-hmm. ideas on uh, restraining our passion and working more for the money. I'm a, a very passionate person myself. So to me, passion is one of my values in my business. Now the question you ask, should we work for free? Definitely not. Does passion exclude a satisfactory income? No, not at all. I believe in the opposite. So the more passion and motivation you bring to your work, the more recognition you you will become for it. So if you know what you're good at, so we are talking about teachers who find teaching very satisfying, very rewarding, and they know they are good at it, then they should get recognition for it. And they are in the position to ask for more and to identify, like you say, a pay rate, I don't know, for a class, for an hour, for a program that they will feel happy with. There are teachers that are working for free, others that uh, accept one pound per hour. Generally speaking, I've seen uh, on uh, the internet, the pay rate ranges between $4 to $90 per hour. And the Mm -hmm. teaching is the same. So let's say that there are some teachers that are better than others, but between $4 and $90 an hour, and the the subject is the same. How can uh, you decide how much you want to be paid? You say the range is between four to 90 and the lesson, the subject is the same. It's never the same. Every person, every teacher is different and every teacher defines and determines the price he or she charges themselves. Again, if they choose to work for a school, accepting something and then being regretful or reproach oneself for it is definitely not the way to go. So have a a clear picture of how much money a month you want to make. And then if you cannot make it in that school or if you cannot make it on your own uh, offering online lessons, what else can you do? A good starting point is understanding what are your expenses and then on the top of it, you add your salary. So depending on uh, where you're based, if you're based in London, obviously it's uh, more expensive to live in London. In Spain, you can uh, retouch your prices, but this doesn't really affect your performances. It's just a very basic line. So once you mm-hmm. have clarity on uh, your expenses, you start understanding how many hours do you want to work for how much. So for example, are you able to work online 40 hours per week? Then you will have this kind of salary. But working 40 hours per week online is really difficult. Yes. Uh, this is not something that you can do. So you have to increase your prices. So based on that, you start write down your all of your ideas, all of your needs. And then once they are on paper, you start retouching and focusing on uh, the smaller details. Absolutely. Very good. Yeah, I love it. If you know how many hours you want to work a week or you can work a week, starting, like you said, with what um, bills you need to pay, what the cost of living, what the cost of maintenance is in the country you are in currently. And then from there, you also need to take into account that being online, teaching online doesn't take into account the preparation, the follow-up. So it's not only the physical lessons that you give, but what you need to do as a teacher prepare before and after afterwards. So increasing your prices, yes. Group teaching, group lessons is very popular. I've seen it in in many Facebook groups. Something you can offer as well. Lucy, thank you. It's been a very nice conversation. What about promoting your services on our channel? Absolutely. I'm I'm more than happy to welcome any expats and non-expats and accompany them. I offer life and business coaching. I work predominantly with expats because... This is the audience that I have personally worked with for 20 years and I'm an expert myself. Coaching is about here and now. So if you focus on your reality, where you're at, and to set realistic and relevant goals so that you can really start taking, like you said, baby steps. Yeah, achieve success abroad where you can thrive. That's my word. I have a Thrive Abroad abroad program. It's a 10-week program where we design the life a person wants to have, whether they are planning to move abroad or they are already abroad. And we then revisit different areas of their lives and we make sure that they introduce balance in all those areas and they are becoming a better version of themselves. My website is lucinabolin.com.
dot com. So if anyone wants to see what I do or book a free discovery call, it's a free chat where we can get to know each other and see if we are a match. They can also experience what coaching is about. So I yeah, encourage everyone to book a call and have a chat. And uh, we will leave uh, the links in the description. That's all for today. I am Bartolo for Gallery Teachers and uh, our very special guest for today was uh, Lucy Bolling. If you want to collaborate with us, if you want to write an article for our blog or you want to get interviewed on this channel, please write to us at editorial at galleryteachers.com and we will get back to you. Thank you and uh, ah, subscribe to our channel, please. Let us grow as a community. Thank you and uh, as usual, happy teaching and happy learning. Happy teaching, happy learning. Nice.